Hi again, welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. Who likes to work in the dark? I guess uh, no one wants to. So, got myself a new project using light cups like these. These are uh, two different colors because you can get them uh, like uh, this is halogen, uh, halogen color. This is more like daylight. This is 3000 degree Kelvin. This is 6000 degree uh, Kelvin. Those come, each, each of them come with their own power supply. This is a DC, DC power supply and they will give you a current limiting uh, so they give their uh, full amount of uh, power. Like this is rated to give 50 watt and uh, I tested it electrically. It supplies 50 watt to the, uh, to the light cup. Voltage and, uh, and wattage, in one current are uh, corresponding to the uh, specification. That's pretty good. Also being DC fed, they, uh, y they avoid the stroboscopic effect that you may get with these, like these cups are fed directly 120 volts AC and they will give you a little bit of a stroboscopic effect. Uh, more on this later. Light cubs, uh, LED cubs need to be refreshed. You can't use them like a, just a normal light bulb. The thing is, uh, they'll they won't last. If you overeat them, their lifetime, uh, no, their service time will be very, very, uh, very diminished. So you need some compa uh, compound or uh, let's say some some way of dissipating the heat. So we'll be building a few a few parts to uh, you know get that uh, achieve that thing. So my uh, raw matter one of the principal raw matter that I'll be using with this is uh, our disc splatters. These are uh, 5 inches, 120, milli uh, 120 millimeters. They're uh, from these hard disks. One hard disk like that uh, supplies me 14 platters. I need 10 per, uh, to get 50 watts out of the, the cubs, I need 10. So I'll be able to do a few. And I got more. Don't worry. Also, uh, these are made uh, basically for, uh, you know, from aluminum. Aluminum is a fairly good de uh, conductor for heat. Not as good as silver, not as good as uh, copper, but fairly good. Better than steel and uh, way better than uh, stainless steel. So I'll be using this. Some of the spacers that are already in there, so there'll be uh, already parts that are already made. I'll be combining with, uh, you know, a, a shaft that I'll do. A few, a few, a few little things, but uh, the projects will uh, will show you along the uh, along the way. And uh, also, if you get those hard disks, you can r recuperate a few things like, oops, this is still in this uh, magnetic structure there that keeps them from uh, biting or just sticking anywhere or uh, attracting so much dirt that uh, you don't find the magnet. So these are very strong magnet. These, uh, if you want to collect them, you can use them for uh, stickers on the fridge if you need something that uh, <laughs> kid resistant or you can even make a, a rotor for a generator or something like that with that if you get uh, you know enough poles of those and uh, you can make uh, the generator the part that turns is the magnet and the uh, the coils is ca can be the uh, the wi the uh, electrical wires themselves so that's how far you can go with this and believe me they're strong also it's a good source of uh, aluminum the uh, hard disk itself, like uh, this, is the the head uh, the head arrangement that goes, uh, you know, and reads the uh, data on the uh, platters. There's uh, 14 platters, so uh, 28 heads on this part. And I guess you probably remember if you watch some of the uh, previous videos that uh, in French we call them uh, the trou du cul. The let's go. Uh, you'll you'll understand. I mean, that because uh, Google will cut me off <laughs> if I say it in English. Uh, it's aluminum, so it's going to be the raw matter for making more um, of those uh, ingots, and uh, we'll make it so the Trudicu doesn't come and steal them again. So that uh, that's about it. I'm not I'm not going to be talking like uh, for hours because we're going right to the project, and as uh, as we go, we'll explain and uh, we'll make the uh, you know come out come down to a, a workable light fixture. This first part we're making is the main shaft where the uh, the hard disk platters in conjunction with the uh, spacers will be used to dissipate the heat. Uh, after this, uh, you know, there is always a better practice to make a little chamfer in the end, so it, it will uh, ease up the introduction of the uh, spacers and disks. The tolerance needs to be maybe one or two thousand at the most. You don't want a bigger uh, air gap because air uh, doesn't conduct heat very much. Now trying the platters, the slip fit on it doesn't need to be too tight just uh, you know nicely the ring just the same thing this is Pierre trying to fix his bobo boo boo he pulled out prematurely <laughs> <laughs>
You are absolutely hilarious. And right to <laughs> By being hilarious, you're not gonna win any election. Don't wanna win no election. No, now you're... Uh, no, okay. Hey, it's got power and tapping. I guess you want some air? No, I can breathe fine. You want me to sing? I know it always makes you feel better. Normally you do the chamfer before. Well, there was the kind of before done, so. <laughs> so. There you go. The center hole was done before. See? See, see, see when you do a chamfer right after the second operation? It just like you get some wobble oh, because that's mine does my mine that's that big around doesn't do that. It just cuts. Not this little rinky dink thing you got. Anyway. You'll never learn. <laughs> the problem is I do learn. Slowly. I just might not remember every time that's different. That's not bad. So that fits. Get this out of there. Oh, I gotta do more work? Yeah, get so to do. It's an ice storm outside. I had to drive an hour through an ice storm to come do your work. Not my work. Our work. We're, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. the funny. Uh, no, the, okay. You want me to face that first? Oh, you can face this one first. There you go. But I'll let you. I'll let you uh, do the ups on this. Oh, you could have, uh, that's okay, no, no. just not matter. How deep do you want to go? Uh, that's exactly what... Uh, I would keep uh, three-eighths of an inch on the uh, other end. How okay. thick is this? That's this. Uh, one inch one. One inch one, okay, good. And see, get like that. Get tool number two DRO zero and Z then you go for uh, two quarters of an inch uh, or about that yeah if you start it a little bit uh, take a little bit less no if I'd be you I'd take a little bit less just a little bit because the boring bar is uh, swinging it's the first big one it'll be fine after that Jeez, it's like it was his babies. Go about uh, 700, just to keep you uh, a few thousands for... Uh... Better, happier. These those uh, bang good bars are not too bad. Finally, <laughs> uh, work pretty they well. Res they resist you. Let's uh, just get an idea as to where we are. Uh, they resist you. Oh, you're funny. I'm as gentle as can be. Oh yeah, no. Like it was meant to be. Pretty good. That's about a thousand, uh, <clears throat> thousand fit. I need to cut this piece here, and it doesn't go very far into the. Um, jaws there this vice so I'm installing two pieces they're not even sacrificial they just go above these uh, or past these uh, jaws and give me more holding uh, surfaces there and I'm going to uh, put a little jack 
right there. This will give me tension. That will that will help tensioning this uh, this part there, so it holds in place. Come on. I've been using that trick just quite a lot, and it works good. Just uh, reduce a little bit the cutting pressure, though. It helps. Going good. Okay, there's no real high precision needed there. Just a fast way to do uh, clean up on this is to use a big, uh, big surface cutter, big facing mill. Chips ahoy. Uh, I think that's clean enough. Next one. So, short, what we're doing is this uh, this recess part there. One inch. It's a high speed steel four flute Niagara cutter. Oh boy. Sticking a little bit. Normally a two flute would be better. Okay, after this first pass, uh, we want to see how much we got left to do on the side there. No need any real super precision. That will do. 724, and we'll advance 724. So Y axis, set this to zero, and I know I got to go 725. Is a hundred thousand passes? Avoid stopping. You might have a problem. Going good. About 1500 RPMs. Now I'm making the uh, markings to put the cobs on the top. I'll make uh, four little holes and they'll be just simply tapped. A very uh, straightforward operation. For now I'm making two of those. I already established my pattern from the first one, the uh, part stopper, and uh, let's make the holes. Not really needing to uh, use any, just uh, <coughs> not gonna say, just pre drilling or whatever, just no spot drilling. Making this deep enough. Oh, right there, <laughs> first shot. That's easy enough. You don't let a, um, even the best drills, drill bits, you don't let them pack up with the chips. <laughs> Not very good. Okay, this is uh, 3 millimeters, 0.5 the uh, step on this. I'll be power tapping. Out. There we go. One very important thing with a tap is uh, no side forces. It can uh, withstand pretty much uh, torsion forces, but uh, applied straightly. Reverse. So there's a little um, preparation to do on this uh, this part there. This is going to go. The, the bottom phase there will go right on this here. So I'm preparing for this. This is going to be a one quarter twenty tap in there. Uh, 
There we go. Another little step. What I'm preparing to do now is some uh, some room to make you know make some place for the um, in the back there to allow for the screw and the pivoting uh, area you know to be installed. Just bear with me a second. Turning about a thousand RPMs. Getting to uh, top of this. Okay, it's pretty uh, wooden. Uh, a tenth of a thousand, that's good enough. I'm going to be lifting the table, lock the table, turning about a thousand RPMs. Let's get there. I'm lifting the I'm lifting the knee. It's much more stable like that. I'm gonna be much more precise also. Yeah, nice mess. Normally with aluminum you don't, uh, and in steel, whatever, you don't uh, pull around and just stay stationary, that's no good. At about 60,000. Zero. There we go. Chatter a little bit, but it uh, doesn't really matter. I'm not tightening too much, I don't want to mar too much. I'm going to be tapping my hole. Drilling first. I'll see if I get uh, uh, too much, uh, too much wobble. Center drilling. I'll be using this to uh, can also make the uh, taper at the, en at the uh, entry. There we go. There we go. If you're a little bit too deep, it doesn't matter compared to being not deep enough. That's it. That's done. Got about an inch of tap in there, three quarters of an inch, that's good enough. Okay, got my central hub installed there, the block, probably on the bottom, so it just uh, stays put tight there we go that should be pretty uh, reasonably straight I'm going to center this here um, it doesn't need to be to uh, you know a fraction of a thousand it's, I'm going to be using my uh, tap drill here let's uh, let's try to center this reasonably well this is good enough now whoops this now let's put this on top there this is going to be uh, its final destination and I'm going to make this reasonably straight with the back by turning this in the back I'm uh, leaning on the on the uh, vice jaw so uh, that's going to be pretty good visually Making this straight, that's good enough. Tying this up. So I'm on the uh, central axis of this. Now I'm going to move a little bit aside to be able to uh, install a little uh, spring pin. If I don't put that little spring pin when I'm uh, going to be using this screw to make the tilting mechanism on this, I'm going to be stuck with something that uh, turns the, le the LED uh, cob will start turning and I don't want that. So I'm going to be putting this little uh, device there to uh, keep it from turning. What I just did, I moved uh, far far aside enough to uh, clear everything, but even there, it's, that's going to be uh, encased in the uh, in the part. Made the little marks on the drill bit. I'm going to go very lightly deeper than this, so I can sink the head in there, and that should be about it. Almost there. Maybe uh, maybe a thirty, forty thousandths, or uh, let's say maybe a millimeter deeper. There we go, very light chamfer. That's good. I removed this and uh, when I want to find the spot 
go, that goes down there. I'm going to make a very light. Oh, maybe a. Uh, there you go. A few thousands, maybe a uh, ten, fifteen thousands deep cut in there. So when the uh, spring pin will go in, that will be easy to register. Then you just press it in for the rest. That's it. Okay, like they say now, assembly required. This is the uh, spring pin that goes into this. So, uh, I'll try if I don't knock my fingers. 